One, I don't know one one. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Oh, it surprises me that. Oh, I can never to... work out where it is. Yes, <laughs> welcome back to Anderton's TV. Um, Pete doesn't smell bad. I'm just sitting further over here so that I can show you some of these guitar amplifiers in the shop. But welcome back. I do smell bad. Um, well. Now, 2023, what we've <coughs> seen in the studio here is a bit of a takeover from amplifiers that are kind of martially. That's correct. We sort Actually. of we we pretty much spent the last six or seven years using amplifiers that were sort of Fendery inspired yeah. as sort True. of pedal amplifiers, and then and then Marshall sent us these, and Friedman sent us these, and now Victory have sent us this, and it's like yeah. yeah. So these are we thought we'd shoot them out. Okay, so Pew! please like and subscribe <laughs> this channel. Uh, if you like what we do, uh, get a little notification every time a new video comes out um, and you might win something. Yeah, Especially yeah. one of these, Clon, yeah. in the corner. Anyway, so got five amplifiers to shoot out today. <coughs> yeah. uh, what you just heard in that opening jam was me just... I'm, we're using this amp, P, amp switcher, so as I literally switch lights here, it changes the amp. Everything's going through that Soldano 4x12 in the corner. It's a 2x12. Can oh, I it's a 212, yeah, yeah, I apologize, yeah. Soldano 212, yeah. which, is a, which is a vintage 30 loaded cabinet. Mm -hmm. And we thought we'd kind of use a different brand to the, the amp, so there's no sort of favoritism as anything yes. like that. And plus it's vintage 30 loaded, right? So it's a really kind of typical 212. It's a typical, but you know, people to do whatever they like these days. If you say so. Right. You know. <laughs> so the five amps, just to be specific here, are the Marshall SV20H. Uh, inspired by the sort of um, super lead kind of vintage 70s era Marshall mm -hmm, amplifiers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we've got the JCM 800 uh, from, but the studio versions. So this mm -hmm, is the 20 watt mm -hmm. studio version JCM 800. Yeah. We've got the Friedman Pink Taco. You would normally see this uh, as a black covered amplifier, but yeah. we have a pink one for no yeah. reason. Yeah, I asked for pink. Um, one. <laughs> the blue one over there is the uh, Friedman Little Sister. Again, a little bit like the Marshall, I suppose. Little Sister is more vintage Marshall inspired. Mm -hmm. um, the Pink Taco is a Gainier, kind of slightly more. I, I would say, if anything, the Little Sister is maybe even slightly more vintage than this. Yeah. And the Pink Taco is more along like a hot rodded up sort of 800 kind of vibe. Yeah. And then the new uh, Sheriff 25 has, um, <laughs> it's the only two channel one in the exactly. out of the five and kind of has Ooh. one channel a little bit more like this, and the other channel a little bit more like this. Okay, so yes, uh, we're. Like I said we're running into the Soldano. Our first amplifier is the SV20. I've taken out all the attenuation and stuff, so these are just straight into the cab. Yeah, no reverbs through the effects loop. All five of these amplifiers have effects loops, but we just decided to go dry like a water biscuit. Um, isn't that weird? Why would you call one of the driest foods on earth a water biscuit? There's no What's a water, water biscuit. I've never had like one a, of a cracker, like a you know, like it's a. It's made of water. I don't know why it's called a what's what. That's why I'm saying. Please comment below. Why is a water biscuit called a water biscuit when it is devoid of water? It's like the you know, like those kind of like ones you put a bit of butter and cheese on. It's like super crispy cracker, very thin. A cheese cracker. Yeah. Anyway, right. <laughs> uh, so we've got. Fun enough, actually, we are using uh, the <laughs> SV20 here yeah. on its oh, low sorry. output mode. Okay because it's the most difficult amplifier to get a sound out of without ripping your face yes, off. Yes, it's very right. Uh, so we would normally use it with this uh, Bugera P1000. 
power soak. Bouchera. But we're say. not today. Bouchera. Bouchera. But today you're spoiling us with your Bouchera power soak. And the Martial. Right, come on. <laughs> Play some chords, please, Mr. Pete. Feel free to dump yes. pedals over the top and tell us what you think. Yeah, right now I'm not going to do sound. anything pedal wise. It's just a Les Paul. Uh, we're going to my pedal board into that. <laughs> It's just a great oh, sound. Oh yes. End of discussion. Yes. It just sounds like a master. Just hit 104 dB on the decibel meter there. It literally Jezebel. can't go any quieter than that. No. It's it is a, a ridiculous amplifier yeah. um, in terms of just a classic old Marshall yeah. rock and roll amplifier for a band. Yeah. Um, no master volume on these as well. It was, you know, it's worth pointing out. <laughs> so I the, know what I'm talking the, about. <laughs> the idea on these um, amplifiers, they're the old fashioned four yeah. input style amplifiers. Mm -hmm. So what you would typically do and what you can see we've done here, the guitar is going into input one. We then join the other input one socket to the input two socket. Uh -huh. And so now what's happening is both uh, volumes are working. Mm -hmm. One is very, very trebly, and that's the one I've got at the lowest setting. And the second one is um, a, a warmer, um, more muted, so like muffled kind of guitar sound, and that's the one I've got a bit louder. Uh, EQ is pretty flat, doesn't do a great deal, the EQ on old Marshall amplifiers. Present slightly rolled off, as I said. Um, can't really get more gain without more volume on this amplifier. So. Ooh. I need dump pedals over the top, but as Pete's playing, I'll see what we can do in terms of sound wise. Okay. So. Want to just stay on the back bricks pick up here, or? Yeah. It's sound. such a good sound. Uh, yeah. We first got this amplifier maybe, I don't know. Six for, months? Yeah, I was going to say less than that. And and it was, you have to learn to love this. It's, um, yeah. it's quite a difficult beast to tame. Um, oh, here we go. But it's just a fantastic sound. Was that my amplifier. wife calling? I thought was... <laughs> <laughs> so that's that. These are about 900 pounds. They're made in the UK. So they're not like a Far Eastern import or anything like that. Um, Pretty good value, actually, I think. That's for good a, value. A British made. You've got effects loop in it, you've got all that different yep, stuff. Yeah, effects loop in there. Yeah. And I think it looks great. You know, got that kind of doghouse kind of look on the amplifier. Dog it! What, what, what could look better? In the doghouse, you said, oh, let me, is that my phone again? <laughs> yeah. Classic. I feel I'm, like it's going to be I'm a red lining thread. Up. <laughs> okay. So, uh, I think. No, I think we're just going to go through these, the two Marshalls, the two Freedmans, and, and then the Victory. As I said, strictly speaking, I think that the little sister is, is probably Freedman's nod to this sort of era. I think so, yeah. or, or even maybe earlier amplifier. Uh, next, JCM 800. So as you probably know, I think this, the, 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 the story behind the word JCM 800 is J, JCM is Jim Charles Marshall. And then he just had a personalized number plate called JCM 800. <laughs> and so he just then, I believe, yeah. that was when coming up with the name for this, that was what they decided to do. So 800 came out in the 80s. Um, the studio version of this has a, a master volume and a preamp gain is 20 watts. We're in the high mode now because it is a little bit more controllable. Uh, and again, the idea is you, you've kind of got a preamp gain control and then a master control. Mm -hmm. So let's have a little listen. Yeah, the, yeah, that, do you know who had the uh, Crybaby on their license plate? Jim Dunlop. Mm -hmm. And Wawa. Wow, wow, really? <laughs> It's a 
brighter it's, piercing, it's more brighter piercing, and um, more gain, as, as yes, I suppose. That's kind yeah, of, it's a different are, gain. There are two inputs. I don't know anybody that uses the low input. <laughs> Yeah. Not really sure what the low input was ever really designed to do. Everyone yeah, I know on uses the higher volume high. ones, on the hundred watt ones. You might it was a, you needed Maybe. that. It's didn't just you? a lot less gain though on the, on the yes. low input. So look, I'll Ooh. I'll kind of introduce the gain. I kind of think this amplifier has a tendency to go a bit fizzy as you introduce too much gain. I think the mistake on this is just to go. Oh yeah, that's the oh, sound. Yeah. All the gain. I but think a mistake. We'll is, see. A lot of mistake is too much gain. Crikey, it's going to be deaf by the end of the day. What? Um, oh, that reminds me has, of It has a master volume and, and an effects loop, but again, I don't know. I'm going to go to low mode now. I'm not sure it's a great sounding amp at really low volume, but let's have a little listen. I take that back. That sounds fine, doesn't it's it? It's all right. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I would rather have a master volume in these cases in, on the lower watt. Yeah. Because uh, it's yeah. just a bit more now, but, isn't it? Yeah. Let's here we. I kind of feel like if you had to, the, the two most owned guitar amplifiers by higher companies around the world are probably Fender Twins and JCM 800s. Mm -hmm. It's just it, loads and loads of classic rock. But it always, yeah. well, I think the 80s was you had a JCM 800 and a Tube Screamer, and that was your rig one. So let, let's yeah. just dump that Tube Screamer over the top. <laughs> Without. And with. Like that good sounding amplifier again it's great it's, so they sound like a marshall yeah this is the same oh. series as the the one underneath and same price as well it's about 900 yeah, pounds great amps uh, great value british, british built nothing wrong with that by the way when we get to the very end of this video and we've done all the heads we're going to do another run through uh through a 112 cabinet so you can kind of hear how they sound like with a smaller cabinet which we will use this little marshall um v-type loaded yeah. cabinet Okay, so number three in our little demo is the Friedman Little Sister. Much simpler amplifier, one input, five knobs, bass, middle, treble, a master volume, as we said before, a gain switch, and then a couple of um, small switches here to do, I think it's um, saturation gain and brightness and stuff like yeah, that. So yeah. we can fiddle around with these. Uh, I'm going to, again, do the same as we did before. So start uh, with the gain about halfway and then sort of show you uh, what it's like with a bit more and a bit less. Yeah. In case you see this little orange box moving around, this is our Lella P-Split. Um, it's basically a little... Um, uh, isolation, ground, like an isolation, yeah. so isolation box. If we get yeah. sort of unwanted hum and stuff in the studio, you yeah. plug this in and it gets rid of that. Everybody who's got two amps needs um, one of those. So we'll probably lights. be using that a lot on these. Yeah. Okay, so here we go with our sort of, you know, in the middle, how we start at the beginning tone. Yeah. 
Yeah, the, so that, the, this is more vintagey in the in the with the switch, the it, saturation switch. All much the way cleaner, down. isn't it? It goes much cleaner than any of those two amps does at lower volume. Oh, that's well, like a crunchy. I mean, this, bizarrely, this goes reasonably clean uh, yeah. on the right setting. I'm pointing at the the SV20 here. But still, but loud. I, I agree that the the. the Little Sister does have a wonderful clean sound on the right setting, you know. And it doesn't have those piercing uh, highs that, no. is that, that the Marshall does, but you know. Oh. It absolutely goes into a, a gain uh, sound that you wouldn't typically um, associate with amps of this kind of era. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's have is a look. That, is that Marshall Lee, it's the sound that you hear on the record, which it's you think we you always, get, we always say We that. always say this, and, and, and ev I think most people, we, we were with Bill Kelleher from Macedon the other day, and he was like, yeah, yeah, clang. Uh, he was the same. It's like, you know, you listen to all these records from the, the 70s and the 80s where the artist is obviously using a Marshall yeah. amplifier, mm -hmm. but the either it's been modded or the engineer has done something in the recording to just get these epic tones. Yeah. And then you go and buy a, 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 a regular yeah. stock Marshall and go, why can't I just get it to sound quite like yeah. that? Some of it's probably in the fingers of the artist. But what Friedman have done really, really well is kind of somehow designed a circuit where it does seem to capture that magic. recorded magic yeah. tone. Yeah, absolutely. Um, magic tone, martial tone. Anyway, let's have a little set. Here we go. Also, I should say again, the master volume is quite so handy, on this. Isn't so, if, yeah. you know, even at higher gain levels like this, you know, we've still got this fairly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's pretty juicy. It's got this low end that just goes. It's the thump. It's the thump. Yeah, it sounds really good. Yeah. Really, really like Thumbosaurus. this. Thumbosaurus. Um, you're probably more familiar with seeing the Friedman in its normal colour, which is yeah. like a black grey kind of finish. But as yeah. uh, all the Friedman stuff has a um, custom Tolex options if you want to go down that route. Uh, they're also uh, substantially more expensive than the, the two Marshalls. Yeah. Almost a grand. Um, yeah, I think on these about 1700, yeah. something yeah. like that. 1700, so, 1800. But is again, there. Friedman would, you know, quite rightly argue that it's it's perhaps a slightly more boutique-y kind of handmade uh, construction process for these amplifiers. But, you know, nonetheless, still an amp that you plug in and <laughs> makes a noise, yeah. however it's made. Anyway, so that's yeah. the little sister. Very, very cool. I think, I think just to add to that, I think the, the addition of the, 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 uh, the master volume on these two amps, in my personal opinion, I might find that I would pay that extra money for that and be able to have the cleaner... Yep. Uh, but that's just me. Anyway. Or you, you could know, just buy, buy two of those and, I know, and, yeah. an, and an Oxbox. You could. Anyway, right, yeah. so Pink Taco. Yeah. Pink Taco is a, quite an old amp in the Friedman range. This is actually the Pink Taco Mark II, which did come out last year. Yeah. But this was the, the, the original, or one of the original Friedman amplifiers was the big 100 watt brown eye, which was an absolute beast and you know and, and and that's i think what attracted a lot of artists to the friedman brand you know when it first came out yeah so the pink taco was like a 20 watt uh simpler version of essentially a, a be 100 yeah best names um, ever um yeah and obviously because it's we because it's a pink taco we got a pink one right but again normally you'd see this in black <laughs> So, like the uh, like the the little sister, it's not a channel switching amplifier. Very simple front panel here, single input, three band EQ, master mm -hmm. and gain. It does have some switches, you know. Again, gain stages, saturation, fatness, things like that. So again, we'll have a flick through that. This um, 
this just does the gainier end of, of the Marshall side yeah. of things. But let's have a little listen here. So I believe this is number six. Much more gain. That's funny when we had Bill oh. Callagher and he played, uh, he played. So, oh, there man. are, I mean, there that's are just different the next. gain stages on this. So it will go a little less, like I think, is it this one, the minimum one? I mean, that's a great sound. Oof. But I think, you know, for full ball. It's so much game, but not fizz. Yeah. It's, that's what it does. It's, yeah. the, it's the power and the thump, but not without the fizz. They I just, love this. It's yeah, they great. just manage to, to yeah. rein it all in to the right angle. To yeah. the right. It's like having a beautiful uh, house, but you just need the corner sorted out. and the, You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, it's like having a beautiful house and you just do it up. You know, new kitchen, all that stuff. That's what they've done with the money. Anyway. Listen to that thump as well, that... Oh. Oh. It's just immense. I mean, this... I think much, it's not really a criticism, I suppose, of something like the, the, the Pink Taco, but it, it does feel a bit like there's not much else to go. It's like, it's a little one trick pony. It's just like, it's a good one trick pony. That's right? the best trick pony you can get. Well, the, the best it, trick a pony can so, do. Um, <laughs> but here, yeah, we've got more gain if you want it. I mean. You don't oh, get a better, man. if you can have a pony that does that trick, hang on, let me see me, I, I should call <laughs> I think my what's mom. interesting here as well is, whereas when we were playing with the two marshals, there was some sense of like, oh, put the tube screamer on, see what it does. Yeah. We didn't even think about it on the Freedmans. It's like, you, the, you don't even, you're not going, I just need to just find some pedals at it. That's the sound. Yeah. That's the sound. This Could is the I sound just, that these just do. They just do it brilliantly wow. well. Brilliantly well. So. There we go, that's the Freedman. I said tons and tons of gain on there. So the last one is the uh, Victory Sheriff 25. It's the newest one. So at the beginning of 2023, mm. uh, Victory updated their old Sheriff range to a, a new range. New kid on the block. Um, as I said right at the beginning of this video, it has a, a vintage channel and a hot rod channel. So it's the only one out of the, the five that is actually channel switchable. Yeah. Um, after that, it's pretty similar in terms of specs, 25 watts and all that kind of stuff. So yep. I guess, um, I mean, we'll might as well start on its vintage Chanel uh, and see what we get there. Chanel number vintage. Oh! It's got the same thump, doesn't it? It's got the same yeah. thump as these two. I don't, that sounds great, man. I don't think, until we get to the Hot Rod channel, I don't think we're going anywhere near what the Freedmans do. But I suppose that's going to be yeah, more... Well, it's more like this sort of thing maybe, on the Vintage, yeah, isn't I it? Mean, it is, isn't it? It's got the thump, though, right? It's, exactly. If you, um, I don't know if you can hop back to, to, the, to the little sister, just... Uh, That 
That's great, man. Yep. They're very, very similar, so, aren't they? Very similar. Hot Rod, I think, is where it gets Ooh. slightly more similar. I should say, so the Victory kind of sits somewhere in the middle in terms of pricing. Uh, again, it's made in the UK. These are about 1200 So it's been, in fact, it's probably bang in the middle between what it would yeah, cost yeah. you to get a Marshall. Actually, that's no, not true. It's a little bit closer to the Marshall yeah. price, isn't it? But here we go. Hot that Rod Channel. good, man. <laughs> I've turned it off, sorry. It's a little bit more, it's a more gay, uh, low end on the pink taco. Sorry, I'm pointing at that and it's that. All oh, right, right, right. We'll annotate on screen, ignore where I'm pointing. Okay. Uh, so sorry, this is this one. Okay. is something dumped in the front end just to give it a bit more. Exactly. I mean, I think these three are very go, similar, aren't they? If we go right back to the original one, you'll kind of hear... It's a very different, much more clarity around the game. Clarity! You know. Still um, good, though. But, I mean, oh, through, 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 if you go back to the clean, cleaner setting on the Victory and, and compare that... three has got that that sound it's very similar those three that and that that and that can do this that, those the jcm 800 they can get the higher gain I, I, tones i kind of feel like the, the sheriff and and the dirty and the little sister have have got probably the widest range of tone in them. yes I've, i agree um the only real difference is you know you can do it with a switch on this whereas on the freeman you've got to change the settings yeah have um, you got the low end switch down on the pink taco so there's a there's a there's a B here, isn't it? On the I've end. I've got I've got a fat switch that's that... switched in. Okay, which down, right? Well, let's try it. Let's go back. Okay. I think so. Are you on the right one? No, I'm not. You're right. It needs to be down. Anyway, I'm, not, man, I'm not sure it's. I'm not sure it's hugely <laughs> obvious. The fat switch too on much here. Too much game for it. Yeah, it, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, 
Right. Wow. So we did promise what we would do, though, is do a run through at the end of uh, through the 112 here. Yeah. I tell you, this little marsh is a very impressive sounding little 112. Um, but let's I've messed around with all the settings now, haven't I? So who knows? Anyway, and I'm, I can't we won't bother moving the Lella switch. So if there's a little bit of hum on some of the amplifiers, ignore it. Hum. Hang on, um, that reminds me of OK, so little Marshall SV20. <laughs> It's less defined that cab, but it's less yeah, money. Struggling, and isn't it? Bit more gain on the. Yeah, that's it. A... Oh man, it's difficult to say which ones the you know. They're, uh, yeah, they're all Victory Friedmans for me. I think they are they're great, but they they're just they need that new they need a new little. Well, yeah, I I think you have you have to say with the Marshalls. They've they're, always been. They're, like they're, that. they're they're the ones with they're the ones who designed this whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, they look great. They're the most affordable of the three. Mm -hmm. Clearly, you can't say they don't sound authentic because. They are what they are. The actual amp. Exactly. Um, but what I want the sound I want when I plug into is, Marshall is this these is that things, and that's the conversation, thing, isn't, it? isn't it? Of, yeah. of, of you know, when you talk to people that really know about the famous Marshall amplifiers that all the players had, whether it's Van Halen or Steve Vai or yeah. whoever it might be, Jeff Beck. There's always a story around like a mod or something yeah. that was done, and I think that's kind of where the Friedman and Victory and the other guys that are playing in that kind of space seem to just go, oh, they've got a bit of license to sort of do their own modded version of it. I used to have a 1972 Plexi, right? Mm -hmm. And there and there was some uh, master volume bill in the back. And it was even the, flipping awesome because it, you could dial it down and get the yeah, tone out of it. Even yeah. going back into no, the 60s, you, you know, I know in that, when uh, Paul Reed Smith did their version of the Hendrix yeah, yeah. Uh, Super Lead, yeah. Even Paul was saying there's mods in they they got one didn't they they got the amp yeah they got the, the actual Hendrix Hendrix, yeah. and they were saying there's there's mods in that as well so um, but I have to say excuse me Les Paul into either of these amplifiers and a tube screamer I still feel like I'm in a very very happy place yeah absolutely I just think I just think it's just yeah if you want that modded Marshall vibe I keep saying a Marshall every time I see him I don't understand why you don't do mod shop versions of your amplifiers you know like go and find out what the santiago mods were on the on the exactly steve and Vai's then you do that you go to, this is, is a 1979 modded v whatever yeah. that's it's charged, absolutely like, and, then, and then you because then you, you get the name and you get the mod yeah but look mod, mod, whatever mod. all three great amp brands uh all three in stock at anderton's yeah. um and all three with a guitar like that gonna get you sounding pretty damn good oh snap Right. There we are. That was good, wasn't it? Please like and subscribe again. Yeah. And we'll see you in another video soon. Goodbye.